Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review of one of my absolute favourite Hornby Railroad locomotives. So it has been way over three years since I last took a proper look at this locomotive and today I'm going to try and give it a proper review. So here it is, it is this, the Hornby Railroad County Class. Now this is a loco that has been part of Hornby's range for many, many years. They first introduced it way back in 1981, which is, well, it's going on 40 years ago now, so a really, really long while. And over the past decade, I can't remember exactly when it was, Hornby re-released this, but they've updated it. Originally, it used to be a tender-driven locomotive, i.e. the motor used to be in the tender, but the latest versions of this have all had the motor in the locomotive, which makes it an awful lot better. So yes, the County Class. It's quite an unusual locomotive. It's an express passenger locomotive from the Great Western, and it's quite unusual because it's one of the one of very few classes of loco from the Great Western that was actually a 440 and not a 460 for express passenger work. So so a really really beautiful model I hope you're going to enjoy seeing it today now unfortunately these have sold out in most places Hornby are out of stock and most of the retailers are however quite impressively Hattons has still got some of these in stock it says over 10 in stock on their website so I have included a link in the description if you want to pick one of these up I think it's going to be worth it but uh, watch the review if you like and uh, wait and see so let's get this out the Hornby County class so yes, there it is then inside the Hornby Railroad packaging. The Hornby Railroad range, of course, being a slightly less expensive, but a slightly less detailed range of locomotives, designed really for maybe beginners or possibly more casual modelers. Uh, but interestingly enough, you tend to find that the railroad locomotives like these tend to run better sometimes than the locos in the main range that cost three times as much or whatever. Uh, so I don't know why that is, but yes, they always, without fail, seem to be really, really reliable runners. Okay, so let me show you the end of the box on this one then and this is our 3277 it's a 440 GWR county class it's the county of Devon and it's the running number 3835 and as you can see it is in the great western lined green which is such a lovely livery especially once again for a less expensive railroad loco anyway there's not an awful lot to see on the box or anything like that which is good for us because we can get straight into it uh, so here we go and I hope you like it as much as I do like I say this this has got to be one of my favorite uh, Hornby railroad locos uh, without question. Right, I'm having a trouble getting this out. No, I got it. Okay. So let's take a quick look at the paperwork then. Here we go. So this is the 440 Compound County Hunt and Schools Class Operating and Maintenance Instructions. And sure enough, all four of those railroad locomotives run on the same chassis. Uh, quite interestingly, the chassis has different slots in it so that the wheels can be spaced uh, different distances apart. But sure enough, all four of those run on the same chassis. And inside here, yes, you can see just the diagram. And again, this covers all of those, the schools, the hunt, and uh, the county, whatever. Uh, so uh, yeah, this one's a bit non-specific but as you can see it shows you how to remove the tender to fit the DCC decoder shows you how to oil everything and yes I should also say that this loco as I say once again for a budget cheap loco it does still have full tender pickups and everything it really is uh, top notch to be honest with you okay so there we go I've lifted up the cover hopefully you can see it there really really lovely you do get a small detail pack with these if I just pull that out uh, so there you go yeah it's just a couple of vacuum pipes there uh, that you can fit to the front and the back of the model if you decide to but uh, yeah as you can tell I've never done that because it's uh, still here in the bag okay so loco and tender are connected together so I'll have to be careful as I get them out there are holes in the back of the box, but uh, I think it's it's easier viewing if I just uh, take it out from the front like that. Very carefully though, of course. All right, so there it is. And as I say, what a smart class of loco this is. I just love 440s, and of course, everybody loves Great Western Green, or most people do. Uh, so yeah, there's not an awful lot not to love about this. Now, the one thing that is quite amazing with this one uh, is not the loco for a change. The loco itself is relatively light. It's not terribly light, but it's relatively light. But the tender, you notice something quite odd about it. The underframe, is actually made of die cast. So all of this on the bottom here, all of the uh, suspension springs and the axle boxes are made of die cast metal. And if you remember earlier on, I said that this used to be a tender driven locomotive. And so that die cast element there dates back to the tender driven days uh, when the tender had to be pretty heavy in order for it to be a decent puller. And uh, that has been carried over, even though the motor is no longer in the tender, you've still got all of those uh, die cast components on the tender, which is a bit like dead weight now. It's not used anymore because the loco drives the thing. 
but uh, it's very nice. It's a shame the Loco, in fact, doesn't have more die cast on it. Uh, but alas, you can't complain about that because, uh, once again, it is a budget model. So there you go then, County of Devon. Absolutely gorgeous. I just love these things and I try to run them whenever I can. So there we go. Did you like that? Well, I, I, I did, but I found that it wasn't quite as satisfying as I thought it was going to be. So excuse me. Shall we do another one then? Yes, I've got, I've got another one. Let me show you the end of the box. So this version is our 3157, County of Flint this time though, and it's 3826. So without any further ado, let's get this one out as well. Uh, yes, for some reason, I bought two of these back in the day. Uh, can you tell how much I like them? <laughs> I think so. Uh, yes, I, I really do like these They're gorgeous things, aren't they? So uh, yeah, for some I think actually originally I bought two so that I could double head them. And uh, I do, well, I can't do that anymore actually there's a, a special reason why I can't do that anymore but uh, we'll talk about that later on uh, I've given one of them a special feature which you might be able to remember okay so County of Flint it's much the same locomotive except of course it's got a different name and number and it's really nice when manufacturers produce you know multiple of the same model but with different names and numbers uh, because it makes double heading and collecting multiple of the same model so much easier so let me try and get them both into shot at the same time it's gonna be difficult but yeah, as you can see, there is a slight difference in colour as well between the two. I don't think that's intentional. I think that's just the way it is. But as you can see, County of Devon there on top is a little bit darker green and County of Flint is a very slightly lighter, very slightly lighter shade. I don't know if it'll even show up on camera. But uh, yeah, that's quite a, an interesting and quite an odd feature with these. Um, but uh, anyway, let's have a little bit of history on the County class then. And as soon as I've done that, I will show you one of these up close so that you can take a look at the detail. All right, let's do it. So the County class, also known as the 3800 class, was designed by George Jackson Churchward and introduced in 1904, so it's quite an old-fashioned design. They were designed for express passenger work and they were produced for about eight years up until 1912, and over that time a total of 40 were built overall. The counties proved to be the last new 440 design used by the Great Western Railway, and yet they never proved to be all that successful. Overall, there was nothing particularly poor about any particular component of the design. They just didn't work all that well as a combination. They were supposedly very rough to ride and a little too heavy to be running on just four driving wheels. Sadly, they were all scrapped and withdrawn pretty early on. In fact, uh, the final withdrawal took place in 1933, so they really didn't last all that long. So there she is then, there is County of Devon, I've picked her to show to you up close and she is facing the other way to usual this time and uh, I'll talk about why that is in just a second. But yeah, as a really inexpensive budget locomotive, this really does look the part, doesn't it? I really can't help but just absolutely love these, as you can probably tell. Now quite clearly they aren't up to modern standards in terms of detail and that sort of thing and uh, obviously that is by design though so we're not here to criticise that today but given the price of these things I don't think the detail is all that bad. Now I've not really talked about the price today, uh, the art, well the price that Hornby were selling these for back when they had them in stock was £90.99. Uh, so I think that is a little bit expensive for this, it's not too bad, however as I say Hattons are one of the few that do still have these in stock and their price is much better. I think it's about a £20 discount on that or something quite close. So that isn't too bad at all, especially considering they are the last people, more or less, I think, to have them in stock. So as I say, yeah, there are areas where this model has been economised, especially on the boiler. As you can see, the lining here is very simplified. You've only got the single bands on here. It isn't all that complex. Presumably the thinking there is that kids and beginners aren't really going to notice or care too much about intricate lining, uh, so they've simplified it there. However, on the side of the cab you can see the lining is pretty complex. You've got the double banding going on there. I suppose it wouldn't have looked very impressive if it had the big thick banding on the side of the cab. But whatever the reason, Hornby have decided to do the cab properly. And as you can see, you've also got the running number very nicely applied to the side of the cab there. Now it's slightly extruded out. It isn't just sort of painted onto the flat side of the cab, which makes it look really really realistic in fact when I first saw it I was wondering whether or not that was an etched piece uh, but no it isn't it is just sitting on a slightly extruded piece but it really does look super effective and the same thing goes with the County of Devon nameplate as you can see it has been nicely applied it isn't etched or anything like that but it is a high quality print which I must say is quite impressive as 
far as the paintwork goes, that's more or less it. You've got a little bit of gold trim, as you can see on the uh, splashes there, but apart from that, that is more or less it. Now, on the subject of the detail, it isn't too bad, in fact, and there are one or two areas that this model does really, really well in, considering how much it cost. But I'll start with the downfalls to begin with then. So if we take a look at the smoke box door, you can see that it is a very, very simple area, and the smoke box dart is quite noticeably just a part of the moulding, unfortunately. The running boards are also very, very simple. There's very little riveting going on on those. It is difficult to tell how much riveting the things would have had in real life because it has been so many years since one existed, although I think they are building a replica, are they? Or is it? Yes, I think they are, so we might find out how accurate that is in the future. The buffer beams, though, are a little bit more realistic. You can see there's quite a lot of riveting going on with those. The buffers look pretty realistic as well. I believe they are made of metal, but sadly they're not sprung or anything like that, uh, and you never know because sometimes the Hornby Railroad stuff does have sprung buffers, but sadly not with this one. There are one or two really impressive details though, as you can see the reverser rod here that comes out the front of the cab and goes down into the running board is actually a metal piece. Now we see so many top quality models, top of the range models that actually have a plastic reversing rod and here we are with this cheap railroad loco and there's one that's made of metal, that is really impressive. And the same thing goes with the whistles, uh, they are the box standard whistles, I've seen them on quite a few models. But ignoring that, they are still made of metal, which just makes the quality of the thing look so much better. And the same goes with the top of the chimney. Now, this actually looks like it's made of plastic. It doesn't have a particularly metallic effect on it, but it is, in fact, metal. If you touch it, it's really, really cold to the touch. I assume it's just had a bit of uh, that sort of copper paint put on top of it. So now let's talk about the cab then. Now, as you can quite clearly see, the cab is one of the areas that really shows this model up as a budget model. When it's running, a lot of the economizations on the detail aren't that apparent, but I think the cab is one area that is very, very noticeable, even when the loco is running, because quite clearly it is such an exposed cab, you can see right into it as it runs, and the fact that it is unpainted becomes quite obvious quite quickly. But of course, there is some level of molded cab detail inside there, so it's not the end of the world if you did, say, want to pick up a paintbrush and paint the details in for yourself. You absolutely could do that. The cab does at least have glazed windows though, as you can see, which isn't always a given with the Hornby Railroad stuff, so I was really quite impressed to see that at the very least. So let's take a look at the uh, cylinders here. As you can see, the uh, little sliders here for the uh, for the connecting rod do slope upwards very slightly. Now, I thought that might have been a defect with this model, but the County of Flint is the same as well. So I don't know whether that's supposed to be like that or not, but uh, the models certainly do seem to have that, uh, which is quite interesting. So that's the loco. Let's move on to the tender then, which to begin with is very, very impressive because of course the whole lower portion of it is made of die cast. And I think that looks a lot more realistic because of that, doesn't it? You just get that really metallic look, uh, which is obviously quite lifelike. You've also got quite a nice livery on this. You've got that early Great Western livery applied to the tender with all of the lining, which looks really, really great. Uh, I think it does look better on top of the line locos. I think the lining is just a little bit better on those. Uh, it's a little bit more complex. But with this one, it certainly isn't bad. And you've got the Great Western lettering applied to there, um, which is done very nicely. Now, you'll notice that the top of the coal load is really, really tall. In fact, it's unnaturally tall. I think if that was real life, there would be coal absolutely everywhere after just uh, a few minutes running. And of course, the reason is because because there used to be the giant Hornby Ringfield motor inside this tender before they converted it to loco drive. And as I say, that was quite a tall unit, and so the extra height was needed in these tenders in order for it to fit inside there. And so obviously that has been left over from then. To be honest, when you're looking down on it, it isn't that noticeable. It's worse when you're looking at it from the side here, but it's not a massive issue, I don't think. But the tender is relatively well done. You can see there are some handrails and things, especially where the uh, cab is connected to it. And around the back, you can see there is a little bit more molded detail going on there and a NEM coupling. As you can see, there is a NEM coupling pre-fitted into the back. It is the large version, but if you've got some of the smaller ones to hand, you can fit those. There's a slight discrepancy there between that and the front bogey, which also has a coupling on it, but that one is uh, not NEM as far as I know. I think that is permanently attached. Uh, oh no, there is a screw, so you could unscrew it, but unfortunately it isn't as easy just to remove that and slip another NEM coupling into it. Uh, so I think if you didn't like that coupling, you would probably just remove it and stick with the back one unless you wanted to do some modification anyway so there we go then that is the detail not too underwhelming really is it i mean of course we we're expecting it to be a little bit simple and it is but uh, not as much as you might think and so overall it comes across as quite an impressive model okay so let's get this down onto the track and we'll talk a little bit about performance then
All right, so I already have County of Flint down onto the track, coupled to a small rake of passenger coaches. And County of Devon here, that's the one we've just been looking at, is down onto the outside line, ready to do some slow speed testing. But first, let's talk a little bit about the actual mechanism inside these models, which is absolutely wonderful. I really do like these. So first of all, full tender pickups, every single wheel on the tender picks up, as well as the driving wheels on the loco. So you've got really good reliability, especially over points. In fact, she's parked on an express point here, so we'll see if she's able to start start off from there. There's a decent motor inside, I'm not sure whether it's 3 or 5 pole, but it does allow for a decent slow speed as we're about to see. And yes, there is a proper set of bearings on the driving wheels, which is absolutely fantastic. In fact, the only criticism I can really think of with the performance is the fact that these do run on traction tyres. And of course, traction tyres mean that the locos don't have to be super heavy, which I think is a little bit cheaty, isn't it? I'd rather they were heavy and didn't have the traction tyres. Now, traction tyres are generally quite dreadful. They do bring quite good pulling power. Power, but they pick up a lot of dirt and dirty your railway before very long and they also corrode over not an awful long time actually in fact I've just taken a shot of the traction tire on County of Flint and as you can see that is so badly corroded it's about to drop off and so no doubt I'll have to replace that quite soon and these are not old models I've had these for three or four years or something like that so not very long at all now interestingly they do run okay without the traction tires there is a little bit of a ridge in the wheel where the traction tire goes though so it's not absolutely ideal and of course they can only manage three to four coaches without the traction tires and I have considered just getting rid of the traction tires altogether but for the time being they've still got them. Okay so my county of Devon has quite a secret feature which uh, I think some of you will know about already but uh, it is on DCC it has got a DCC decoder fitted inside and if I just press this button you will hear something. There we go. Yes, this loco does have sound fitted. Now, it isn't proper Great Western sound. It's, uh, I think, an S and DJR 2P or something like that uh, decoder. But it does have whistles. Uh, no, that isn't a Great Western whistle. And neither was that one. But uh, I had a, a 2P chip lying around, so I thought I'm going to put it in my county and make something quite unusual, let's say, quite unique. So here we go then, let's try a little bit of slow speed testing, see if she'll do a crawl for us, set it to 4 miles an hour, which is the slowest speed she'll do. And as you can see, she does crawl reasonably slowly, I mean there are some that are better, but I think still the performance has to be a 5 out of 5, uh, just because of how reliable it runs. But as you can see, that is reasonably smooth and reasonably slow, uh, and on DC they can go actually go a little bit slower. Let me send it backwards, see if it's any better backwards. No, it's just about as good backwards, I would say. So yeah, a very impressive performer. And I'll leave her to it, I'll leave her to her little bits and bobs. And we'll try the same thing with the County of Flint. Let's just bring it in and focus in on it. There we go. Now bear in mind this has got coaches, so it, you know, it will probably not be quite as smooth as it can be. But as you can see, it does very slightly slower on DC because I've got a steady hand. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, generally speaking, that's a very, very good crawl. Okay, so let's get County of Devon coupled to her coaches then, shall we? Bear with me, I'll just speed her up a little bit. Okay, let's bring that to a stop. Yes, I've noticed that the traction tyres come off a little bit as I've, as I've been running us just now. Absolutely dreadful things, aren't they? But... I can't deny I absolutely love this thing. I know it won't be for everybody because it is quite a simple model, but for me who just loves a good runner and basically just loves a 440, uh, it doesn't get a lot better than this really, although I wish it didn't have those pesky traction tyres. So let's try her then. There are, let's see, five coaches coupled to her now, so that's quite an, um, quite an amount, I think, for a 440, although of course she has got traction tyres, well, sort of. I think that one's about to drop off. And I think that's the second time in 2019 I've had a loco lose its traction tyre on video because that uh, railroad schools class did the same thing. I really can't understand why Hornby persist in using traction tyres. It's irritating, to say the least. OK, here we go. Let's have a whistle. There we are. <laughs> Let's see how long she keeps that tyre for, shall we? It's not long, it's my wager. Anyway, she's hauling it all right for the time being, so let's get County of Flint started too. Yep, that's what we're dealing with, folks. Sorry to interrupt, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to have to take this off for the running session for obvious reasons. Not good. Really don't like traction tyres. 
Okay, so Devon is now tireless, as she should be. Of course, it does mean that she won't be able to haul all of those coaches anymore, so she's down to three. Um, so, yeah, I might, I might put another uh, tyre or two on there, um, because, obviously, three coaches isn't very impressive. But there goes Flint. Flint has still got her tyres for the time being, so four coaches managed quite happily there. And then on the inside line, I have yet another 440 from the Great Western. This time it's a Backman model, top of the range sort of thing. It is the Duke Dog, or the Earl Class, I believe it is. And uh, yep, as you can see, she's got quite the mixture of different Great Western coaches. So see how many other different types of Great Western uh, locomotive you can spot on the layout, and let me know in the poll how many you spot. I'll put up the poll a little bit later on. Yep, she's down to two coaches because she stopped on Gordon's Hill. So yeah, that's a disappointment. I was hoping to give the mechanism a 5 out of 5 on here, but because of those tyres and the way they behave, I will have to knock it down a point or so. But uh, yeah, overall the mechanism's great, but just buy a pack of traction tyres. They're about a tenner, and you get ten in a pack. Because you will need them, unfortunately. They really don't last as long as they ought to. County of Flint are quite badly corroded as well, but uh, they seem to be staying on the wheel for the time being, so <laughs> I think we'll leave them for now. But the worst thing is, they're supposed to be beginner's locos, and it's actually a very, very difficult process to replace the traction tyres, because you have to remove the crank pins and take the rods off to, to actually get the traction tyre around the wheel. So it's easier said than done. Uh, it's a job I hate doing, and I've been doing this sort of thing for years. So yeah, not great. But with a big old weight and proper wheels rather than ridged wheels for traction tyres, I reckon without tyres these would pull four coaches easily. Uh, maybe I'll try that. I might try putting some more weight in, but uh, hmm, not sure really, not sure. But let's not forget how lovely they are. I mean, it's easy to when they play up, but uh, yeah, they are lovely models at the end of the day. We are at least Flint's pulling a decent passenger train though, that's not too bad, is it? Four coaches or so, that's all right. And the Duke Dog there. As I say, no traction tyre on there, and that's pulling four coaches now with no problems. So that's all. You just need a bit of weight. Alright, so here are some of my ratings then for the very lovely Hornby County class. Now yes, I've given the detail only two stars. I know that sounds unduly harsh and I don't think there's anything wrong with the detail. Obviously it's supposed to be quite simple as a railroad logo, but I think I have to try and be as accurate as possible with these, so I have given it the 2 out of 5, but to be honest all the other aspects are really, really good. Performance for example, I think I've been a little bit generous here, but I think that balances out the harshness of the detail category, but it is a fantastic slow speed runner as you could see, and actually with the traction tyres as much as I don't like them, they do actually give the model a really good amount of power. The mechanism then is a 4 out of 5, it's got the full tender pickups, it's got the full set of bearings on the driving wheels, I think the only downside is the pesky traction tyre, so I've had to knock a mark off for that, but apart from that, yes, they're fantastic uh, in terms of mechanism. The quality is also 5 out of 5, there's an awful lot of die cast, including the uh, chassis of the tender, which is very impressive. And of course the models are very, very sturdy, they're designed so that children and beginners can handle them without damaging them, and you absolutely can do that, they are really, really sturdily built. So that's a 5 out of 5, the value then, the RRP of £90.99 is a little expensive I think, but Hattons are selling these for a lot cheaper, £74 I think, so actually that's a little bit better, I've given it a 4 out of 5, that isn't too bad, and as always there's a link in the description if you want to pick one up before they're all gone. Overall then, that is 7.61 out of 10, a very, very reasonable score for a budget local and into the ranking she goes and there we go fifth just above the Dapol B4 and below the Oxford Janus yeah that isn't too bad at all so the traction tyre issue is annoying as I say but these models are now three or four years old and I can't deny that I have had at least three or four years decent service out of them before the traction tyres started to give up uh, so you know it's not as though they're going to be causing problems out of the box but uh, I, as I say I would certainly pick up a pack of traction tyres just so that you've got them in case anything ever goes wrong. But as I've shown, it will run okay without the traction tyres. Just won't be able to pull so much. So there you are then, folks. That is my review of the Hornby County class. Clearly, they're not absolutely perfect, but they're not bad for beginners, to be honest with you. I think you can do quite a bit worse <laughs> elsewhere. 
So I hope you enjoyed the review, folks. Thank you all very, very much for your company. Do let me know, of course, what you thought about this in the comments. But for now, I will see you all very, very soon. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Cheers, everybody.